Hello, welcome back again. I'm here with Greg Mulholland, MP, today, who's one of the many people who's been pouring through um, headquarters out to campaign for us today. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure. Thank Gre you. Great to be here, Rebecca. Greg is the MP for Leeds Northwest. Now, at Millam Hustings last night, the last question that came up was about what can you actually get done given that we've got a Tory government on full throttle in Madville, um, what can we actually achieve as MPs? So I talked a little bit about how I've been able to influence policy and I'm currently working on the Euratom amendment that's going through the Lords. But I thought it'd be lovely to... Greg's been an MP since 2005, so in opposition and in coalition and then yeah, in I've got opposition. the grey hair to prove it. Oh, blimey, yeah. <laughs> So you were going to talk about a few of the things that you focused on. So you mentioned um, campaigning for medical drugs licensing. Right, yeah, I think the first thing to say, and people often said it to me before I was elected and say it to me since I've been elected, they say, well, what can you do? What can you do as one person, as one MP? And I can say, having been an MP now nearly 12 years, I was elected the same year as Tim, um, just down the road, is actually you can change a lot. You don't manage to succeed every time, you don't always um, get the outcomes you want, but you actually do get some of them and you can change things very significantly. And you can do that as one person. And really, I see politics as something very simple. I see politics as wanting to change things for the better. I think when politics becomes something else and it becomes something that doesn't relate to people. They see it as distant. They see it as Westminster. They see it as about politicians. It isn't. Politics um, is simply about trying to do things better, trying to run things better, like the health service. And you can do that. And I think what you do as an MP or as a councillor is you find issues that um, you know are clearly wrong, where there's something wrong, an injustice. Plenty of those here in Copeland. Yeah, I've heard. I've, and I've been reading about the, some of the appalling proposals for the NHS here. If you campaign on them, do so in the right way, get people working with you, you can actually change things. You can stop things. Don't yeah. ever let anyone say you can't. You can if you campaign in the right way. Um, very recently, on a much smaller scale to the sort of things you're facing, we have seen the, the reopening of beds at my local um, small hospital, Wharfdale Hospital. Yeah. Um, and that's that's taken years. It's taken longer than it should, but we've achieved it now for a six-month period. So that's a start, and we, okay. that wouldn't have happened. In terms of the 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 drugs for ultra rare diseases, I had a constituent, um, a little boy in my constituency with Morkio disease. I'd never heard of Morkio disease, yeah. and his parents came to see me with um, with Sam to say that uh, basically he wasn't going to carry on getting the the drugs that he needed funded by the NHS. And that would mean that he had no treatment at all for a condition which otherwise will deteriorate. Um, so we campaigned very hard for that. Um, I then started working with the, uh, the society, the Morkio Society. Um, other parents got involved. The next thing, other conditions and other charities, um, other parents were saying, well, actually, we're in a similar situation. So we ended mm -hmm. up campaigning for three different drugs for three different conditions. Uh -huh. um, and in the end, um, one by one, over the course of 18 months, all three of those drugs were approved. And that was fantastic. And was that while we were in coalition or was that at other times? Um, it's, I think, I mean, it wasn't to do with the coalition, interestingly. I think the campaign started well whilst we were in coalition. So access to ministers was slightly easier. But, um, you know, it's something that happened uh, over the course of the last couple of years so it's it certainly spanned this parliament and the last parliament okay. um, and we've carried on and we've had disappointments as you always do we thought we got there with one drug and then actually we didn't which was a real blow so we changed our tactics had a, a protest outside prime minister's questions i got a prime minister's question um and that's the kind of thing that can make a difference it can make a, a huge difference yes um, and you know so anyone who says Oh, but what can you do on your own? You're not in government. It's, it's simply not true. Um, and sometimes a very good parliamentarian, a very strong campaigning MP from a different party can have more success, actually, than one from the government side. Because sometimes 
uh, and I think this is something people in Copeland need to think about. You know, a government MP will spend a lot of time defending the government to the people rather than actually getting on and campaigning. So they'll be making excuses for NHS cuts rather than There's actually... certainly a lot of excuses to Rather than much. actually getting out there and saying, no, this isn't acceptable. And that's clearly what, um, what Copeland needs and actually what all, all areas need. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's something I've learnt about campaigning in All I've Achieved. Oh, thanks to all of those who, who are watching. Please share this video. Please share it on Copeland forums. Please share it on Lib Dem forums. Please send us any questions. But it's the, when I'm campaigning in, in policy and in politics, I, the number of times you have to do everything you possibly can, watch it fail, and then go back to basics and start again and find a way to do it even more effectively. That's something I'm finding particularly with the Whitehaven Academy issue here. We have a, a, an academy with extreme issues because they have a sponsor that should have been removed long ago. And we can't move forward in sorting out that academy because the sponsor has not been removed. And I, you know, during this campaign, I've been trying to get that into the press. And I just find it so hard to break through. The national media seem to have absolutely no idea what's going on in Copeland. And they, they just don't really care. They're on their own agenda, writing easy stories that you can make up from a desk in Westminster. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's so I have to... And I did that with policy when I was passionate. I did some policy work on reducing the unintended consequences of Ofsted's behaviour. And time after time after time, people would say, look, you, the work you've done, the policy you've written is wrong for this reason. It's just, it all comes crashing down. And then you look at what, what remains and start rebuilding it from scratch. Yeah, absolutely. And I think unlike the other candidates, you've got a real track record of campaigning at a local level, which I think is hugely important. And anyone who will become an MP during the course of a parliament, which is a tough thing to do, needs to have some experience and needs to have that natural ability to, to get on and campaign. And, you know, you're perfectly placed to do it, being someone who is you. You know, from, from this area. Um, I'm very lucky that I know this area. I come to Keswick every year and I have a big affinity with the, the coastal parts um, of, of the constituency as well, and particularly through Rugby League, because I'm the chair of the, the Rugby League parliamentary group. So obviously... Um, West Cumbria the is one of the, the is one of the big rugby league, league areas, and we're very, you know very what proud of that. What is the rugby league parliamentary group, Greg? Well, there Who's are lots on that? Of, there are we have some Cumbrian MPs um, as well as uh, MPs from obviously uh, Lancashire, Yorkshire, but also all over the country now. And so, what does the rugby league parliamentary group do? The rugby league parliamentary group stands up for rugby league as a sport, and for those who know something of the history um, of rugby league, rugby league. Um, really uniquely is synonymous with a struggle for social justice um, and and equality. Um, Go on, it, tell us more. Rug, well, like I, I, more. as I'm sure you know, rugby league was a sport that started simply because um, those people, those men at the time who were wanting to play, they didn't want to be paid. They simply wanted to be compensated for the wages that they would lose um, from taking a Wednesday afternoon off from work to, okay. to play. Um, and they were refused by the um, the elitist bosses of, uh, of of rugby as a game, rugby union as it became. Okay. Um, and then it became a different game, but there's been prejudice, there's been a ban in the armed forces, which was overturned by the Parliamentary Rugby League group. Wow. There, there was um, what was called the, the big divide in, in rugby between the two codes, and anyone who even trained with a rugby league team will be banned for life from playing rugby union. Thankfully, all those things are gone now. And I'm a big friend of rugby union as well as um, a huge supporter of rugby league. Yeah. But those things I, were I there. I have a sense of that. But and, it's really yeah. interesting. Well, and, and Cumbria was one of the uh, counties of origin, one of the three counties of origin of of rugby league. Um, in you know when it was formed back in Yorkshire in 1895. So very proud history of uh, rugby league in Cumbria. And I hope we will see a super league team back in Cumbria before so very long. That'd be great. Yeah, I mean you get. The different MPs I've worked with just have such different passions and interests. And taster for tomorrow, I'm going to be doing Facebook Live with Gordon Burtwistle, Excellent. talking about apprenticeships. I like Gordon, he's great. Yeah, he came up and did our, our annual dinner about three years ago and really inspired me then. Just such, such a good speaker. And he was another way that I managed to influence things here for West Cumbria because um, I was coming north from London on the, on the Virgin train and this guy was sounding off 
uh, we've got a great apprenticeship scheme here called Gen 2. We've trained loads and loads of apprentice, apprentices in West Cumbria and it's really well run and well respected and it's what a lot of people want for their kids to get a Gen 2 apprenticeship. And this guy was sounding off about coalition policy on apprenticeships and he was really worried that it was going to damage the way that Gen 2 functioned. Never heard of him, he was just angry and, and talking loudly on the train. So I went and talked to him and said, look, I'm a Lib Dem, tell me. It was partly our, it was substantially our work that he was worried about. And he told me exactly what was going on. It's clear he had a real issue. So I put him in touch with Gordon and he went and met Gordon, who was focusing on apprenticeships and fed yeah. into Vince Cable at the Department for Business. And you know, I think it all got sorted because Gen 2 has continued to thrive. And a lot of politics is just about making links between people, where if previously those links hadn't existed, then things would have gone wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And then, as you did, listening, taking the time to actually hear about real experiences rather than preaching at people about what should be happening. Yeah. And then l learning from that experience and making sure things work as they should. Yeah, I'm going to leg it down to T Bay and meet him there. Excellent. Because he's it's, it's getting major dental work done in the morning and he's got to be back for a meeting in the evening. <laughs> and this is the only way we could fix it up. But it's... Well, I stopped at T Bay Services on the way up. So yeah, they're yeah. very good, aren't they? Yeah, very nice. Very, very proud of them, T Bay Services in Cumbria. Right, let's have a look at some of the comments. People have been sharing our video. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. You Hello, very much. Catherine. Uh, thanks. One of our campaigners. Thank you very much, in the Catherine, background. for the lovely sandwich, cup of yeah, tea. Yeah, made us and, lunch. Uh, so for all who want to come and help in the last few days, there's lovely tea, buns and sandwiches here. Yeah, we're just covering the door, isn't there? So there's no way of getting in and out of this room. <laughs> it's got, hang on, can we see Phil over there? Give, Give us a wave, Phil. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what are you at the minute? Are you our vice chair? Yeah, vice chair. Yeah, I was chair for a long time, running things here in, uh, and we're just, just back from a holiday. I've got to put him, back, put him to work now. You know, to come back refreshed, unlike the rest of the people who've stayed here are all ill and keeling over from too much delivering in the rain. Well, even better, Rebecca, we can't quite see the tops of the mountains yet. Oh, here we go. But it stopped raining. Finally. It's been yeah, raining all so we're going day. out in just a minute. So we're going to go out. That skidder there and the clouds are drifting past. I don't know if that is showing. But, I mean, it's the Lake District here. It's just every, every moment is different, you know. It's just great. Yeah, I love it. It's fabulous. Keep up the great, the good work. Thank you very much. Christine Hunter says, I was listening this morning to the BBC Cumbria debate. OK, so that's the debate that we filmed, we recorded last Thursday with all seven candidates. It's now long and it was on Radio Cumbria at nine o'clock. The morning. link is on, on this page. And Christine is saying, can you say a bit more about your plans for infrastructure. This came up in Millham last night. There, the key bit of infrastructure that needs to be massively improved is the A595. Do you know it down the west coast? Uh, oh, yeah, I've not dying. been on it for a while, but I, yes, I do know it. It, it. The further south you get towards Millham, yeah. it's horrendous. It's not even a two-width road in places, and there are loads of really sharp, curvy bends where you're down to like 20 miles an hour. Nausea City... If you're taking your kids on that road, take plenty of sick bags. I can recommend some good ones because they've all been used in our car. Um, so there was a guy at the Millham Hustings from the A595 Action Group. And he was saying, what can you do? And I was explaining that we need, although the government has refused to fund a study of how to upgrade the road, we need to make that study happen anyway, using some of the expertise we've got here. We've got to agree priorities, work out approximate costings for different things that can be done so we can start to put together clear focus bids that we all agree on in West Korea and they fit with our order priorities and things depending on the size of what's available and start making some progress. That would be my key one. I mean, there's so many infrastructure issues. You'd need to be more specific. Got any more questions coming in? Or should we get in and go out and debut? Are there any other bits of your work that you're really proud of that you'd like to tell people about? Well, I probably have to say this because we're in Keswick, which has, I think it's about the only place I know that has as many pubs um, compared to Otley, where I live in Yorkshire. Uh -huh. And I'm, uh, I'm someone who's known for pub campaigning. And okay. I actually... That really to... matters around here. That course yeah. has been so hard hit. Please I actually managed to done. change the law with regards to the relationship between the large tide pub companies and their tenants. Currently, okay. I'm in state of uh, the first six months or so of operation, and we are holding the pubs adjudicator to account because he's not doing his job. 
in terms of dealing with some of the abuses of some of the pub companies. But we actually did manage to get the law changed, and that was something that I managed to do um, partly through influencing um, our ministers, Vince Cable, Joe Swinson, who did a great job while they were business ministers. Okay. But it's a campaign that had gone on for about six or seven years, which I led in Parliament, and then um, really managed to get uh, people from across the House, actually, to support it because they knew yeah. from their own constituents what was going on. The media are interested in having the politicians fighting with each other, but there are so many areas where, you know, as Joe Cox said, there's so, we have so much more in common than that which divides us, and really they're... People aren't holding a particular agenda and we'll just work together. Yeah, there's much more working together than you would think. But certainly from what I've seen about the issues in Copeland, the last thing you want is a Conservative MP who will simply um, think that they're comfortable and you know say uh, you know how great the government is and not hold the government to account over their plans for whether it's hard Brexit or cuts for the NHS or you know slashing... Um, things like uh, our uh, environmental emissions targets. You know, we need someone to actually stand up to this government. The Labour Party aren't doing it, as is well known. Yeah. That's, what, that's why Jamie Reid, who I knew, decided he'd had enough. So we need someone here who, who can and will and someone who is a, a real campaigner. Yeah, I mean, the mood out there in the public minute, their Labour polling initially, they leaked their polling that said that their vote had collapsed by between a quarter and a third at the start of this campaign. And it has collapsed so much further since then. The feedback now everywhere, apart from Labour Party members and just a handful of people who are sort of endemically Labour, is that there's a real hatred of voting Labour. They really won't. Um, and I'm just so worried that they'll go out of the fat into the fire of um, voting Tory. And that'll be even worse. And well, with the things that this government are doing, that would be the last thing I think that this area needs. So and we've got I think the need to get that message out over the last. We've got last the few opportunity days of this to do something good, and I work with everyone, and I know what I'm doing, and just bring this community together. Work in a. We said at um, Millam Hustings, I was explaining the Lib Dem preamble to the Constitution that we're an open party. We value openness, and that's not about open borders, as people tend to quote. It's about. It clearly explaining precisely why we're doing what we're doing and in, uh, inviting people to get involved in that discussion and influence what we're doing. Exactly like here, where you can just question in real time and ask yourself, you, you, you totally feel like you're talked out and have been understood. Like Jane's comment. Voters, voters loving, loving the idea of you and Tim working together, two Liberal Democrats battling for Cumbria. Any examples of how this would work in practice? Well, um... Tim was already working... Yeah, 595. Yeah, the 591. <laughs> Sorry, 591. 591 was the road that fell into the lake after Yes, absolutely. Floods. And then the 595. And that, in terms of... uh, it was half in um, Tim's constituency and half in Jamie Reid's, but Tim covered it all. So he came up and met me with the Keswick Flood Action Group. Um, and that issue there is a real overlap issue. It's in where the two, the two constituencies come together. And then finally, Andy, what advice can you give to Rebecca? And generally trying to cut through the media when they're not incumbent or seen as the main challenger. Really, I mean, obviously, there's only three days left of the, the campaign now. But yeah. um, we managed to present myself as the main challenger um, yeah. in 2005 when actually we were in third place. So it can be done. You can yeah, do I it. Yeah, I mean, I am clearly the main challenger. It's Tory or me. But the, the national media haven't picked up on, on yeah. that at all. I mean, I phoned Michael Crick this morning and said, what the hell do I do about it? Because he's probably... <laughs> well, in a sense, who cares what the to... national media is saying? You know, The local media are very and, supportive. And uh, tell the local media. Most importantly, tell, tell people locally. But it can be done, Andy. What you've got to do is show that you are um, the top campaigner in the area, show that you're campaigning harder and on the issues that matter to people than anyone else. Um, and also show that you are the one who looks the most like a campaigning MP who would stand up for people, because that's what people want. That's what we did in Leeds North West. Um, it's what other Liberal Democrats have done in other areas. It can be done. So, um, And finally, you know, whoever can help in the last few days up here, uh, yeah. come and do it. It's Please come beautiful and help. scenery, uh, you know, really fascinating area. It's worth it's worth the effort to Phil, come. Phil, do you know what our HQ phone number is? Have you got it handy? I can... Put it, put it on the Facebook Live if anyone wants to call it. 
Um, or you can go to rebeccahanson.org.uk where you can donate or you can volunteer to help. Also, if you're watching this video on record, please share it. Please like the page. I'll probably be back later tonight. I want to do a bit of a fun one about the some of the... There's been some really funny stuff during this campaign. And tomorrow I'll be back with um, Gordon Birtwistle. And HQ if you number. want to help, the <laughs> HQ number here in Copeland to come and help Rebecca and the team is 07933 Should we learn our Anton deck lines and <laughs> calls to this number may be charged? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you probably better do that and all that. Okay, yeah. it's time to... And uh, we better get, go out and do some delivering before... Delivering uh, and canvassing. Before it starts raining again. Thank you. Thank Bye you. for now. Bye.